when I had started off programming AI contests, in the first things that used to come to my mind were alpha beta, which is basically uh, an optimization of the minimax. And then I would start optimizing. So this would happen for around six days. And at the end of the day, I would get a rank of let's say 30 to 40 world standings. But then all of it was blown away by this simple idea that for different positions you need to search at different depths. That's what iterative deepening is. To be honest, this is a concept which should have which should hit every programmer very soon when they have started with AI. But I think it's also one of the most underestimated things when it comes to studying about AI. What you really need most of the times is flexibility. And to improve performance, you don't always need to improve on you know your game state representation and all that so much as you need to improve on your flexibility. If you have a tree of you know, a depth D, and an average branching factor of B. So these many branches sprout out at each, at each position and that factor is given by B. Then what you can say is that, let's use a different color. This is position zero. This is after playing one move. This is after playing two moves and so on and so forth. So The first position requires one computation. After that you have b more states to look at. Then you have b square more states to look at because they multiplied by a factor of b. And then b cube and so on and so forth till the depth that we decided to search up to which is b of depth. When you work on the minimax algorithm You know, b raised to power depth is the number of nodes that you will uh, search because after you're done with that, you really need to start working on heuristics and return a result. The problem in a competition is that you have limited time to return a result. And so you never know up to what depth you can go. Given an infinite time and resources, you can go all the way down you know, uh, expand the entire game tree and then find the best results, but that's not a practical approach. So what we need to do is keep depth flexible. If the position is, is very abstract and you have lots and lots of, uh, you know, uh, states sprouting from each state, so many moves are possible. This is usually in the middle game and in the opening. That's when branching factor is large. So the depth that you want to go up to should be small to avoid a timeout. But near the end game, there are only few possibilities which are, uh, which are sensible. Most of them are either winning or losing. And so what happens is that tree thins out. So this branching factor goes down. Immediately, the amount of depth that you should search should go up because you have time now and you should utilize your resources as much as possible. So taking that into account, what we say is that we want to increase depth as much as possible, but also make sure that we are not timing out. And here we make a very interesting observation. B raised to power D is actually B into B raised to power D minus one. If B is 10, what that means is that this value, let's say t, capital T, and this value, small t, are off by a factor of b. Writing it in a different way, we get that, and, and b is 10%, b, b is 10 actually, so, one by 10 is the time 
that you need to calculate one level lesser. This is your resultant level. One level lesser needs just one tenth of the time. That's 10%. If your branching factor is more, the time will be even smaller. But there's another interesting result. What about going to a depth of d minus 2? d minus 2 requires 1 by 100th of the time. That's 1%. d minus 3 will require 0.1%. So you'll see what's happening here. 10% plus 1% plus 0.1% and so on and so forth will give you somewhere around 11%. With 11% of extra computations, you can find out really good results and increase the flexibility of your program so that it can, it can play very well uh, in any given position. That's the idea of iterative deepening. It's not optimal in terms of using extra computation, but it's very practical and the most flexible option that you have. The strength of my program shot up after I started using iterative deepening because I no longer needed to guess what the move number was. And based on that, what kind of mapping I would have to the depth that I could search to. So here is the code for iterative deepening. As you can see, there are some moves you can play in the start. What you do is you initialize them, sort them according to the heuristic strengths, and then on the board, you play these moves. Here's the iterative deepening part. You have a particular depth up to which you're going to go. After this depth, you, you typically return the heuristic, heuristic strength of the position. Uh, the thing is, you're going on incrementing depth by one every time you complete evaluating the position up to that depth. So that's it. It's just a for loop. Uh, max depth is a constant that you can assign. Most games end in 60 moves, so uh, I have put max depth as 60. In evaluate, if you have taken too much time, then what happens is I throw a timeout exception and that's caught here. So it's not... It's not too scary. It's not too scary because uh, it'll be ignored, and the best move will be returned. So the best move up to this point, up to this depth here. Another extremely important use case of iterative deepening is in alpha beta search. So if you're participating in a contest, alpha beta is almost compulsory if you've chosen the min-max algorithm to go with. So alpha beta enhancements can you know, a reasonable heuristic gives you about 25% savings per branch. So with 75% of the branch left, and if you're going up to a depth of say 5, which is very reasonable, 0 0.23 is what you're left with, meaning you have 75% savings compared to the plain minimax algorithm. So alpha beta tremendously changes the amount of nodes you need to search. But that's not all. Iterative deepening can help you in alpha beta. What it can do is it can go to a depth of level D and then instead of using heuristic strengths or something like that, you can use the evaluated board to set the strengths of those moves. Alpha beta requires the moves to be sorted in terms of their strengths. So usually we use heuristic strengths. But when you have gone to a depth of level D, why not use the, the strength of the board found out up to that level and use it in the next level, D plus 1. You can imagine the difference between using a function, evaluation function or a heuristic and using a concrete thing like uh, finding up to a level D. This really changes things. It speeds up the algorithm tremendously because alpha beta can now focus on you know uh, getting more prunings because the strengths are really really good so some of the theory behind 
alpha beta is that if you have a perfect heuristic you get around 50% savings per branch and 50% savings is is basically 2 raised to the power depth savings and if you're going up to a depth of 5 then you can you can see that you require 1 by 32 of the time that you would require otherwise so what we really want to do is make alpha beta more and more efficient the more savings we get here the lesser work we have to do and iterative deepening can help us by sorting the moves as per our requirement all right that's pretty much it about iterative deepening i will be working on alpha beta search and uh, a session on that so hopefully that will help and i hope that this one the iterative deepening part really helped because it's one of the reasons why the top contestants get really good ranks it's, it's a big thing in your algorithm so thanks for watching best of luck